Are you a Peter? Are you one who steps out fearlessly in faith? Or are you a bit more cautious, like Andrew, or Thomas, or John, or any of the other 11 disciples in that boat? I suspect that most of us would identify more with the other 11 than with Peter in this instance, especially when he got a little bit more wet than he had planned. Yet I submit that we are all called to be Peter's in this text, and is reinforced even more in the Romans passage. Oh, when the others did eventually step out, Ten in faith and one in something else. But you might say, I don't see much stepping out in faith in our reading from Genesis. Instead, we see a dysfunctional family. Some might even say that Joseph was behaving a bit like a spoiled brat, especially if we include a section not read about the dreams that indicated that his future was one in power, not only over his brothers, but also his mother and father. Unthinkable in that cultural context. We read how he is privileged with a long coat, with sleeves, clearly, not suited for heavy, hard work. His steps seem to be in reporting back on the misdeeds of his brothers. Another reason for them to dislike the favored, even spoiled, youngest brother. Then he does step into it. The plot to kill him which becomes the wife of a slave, carried off to Egypt. Yet, even though we don't see the hand of God, we have no doubt that God is watching these events unfold and will use them to save more than just this one family in the coming years. Let's return, though, to our Gospel lesson, which begins right after last Sunday's. You remember they had two significant meals, one at Herod's palace, leading to death. And Jesus had learned of the horrendous murder of John the baptizer and had invited his disciples to withdraw to a deserted place. When they arrived, there was no rest for ministry, for the people had gone on ahead of them and were waiting. Instead of sending them away, so Jesus and the disciples could regroup, so they could mourn. Jesus had compassion on them and healed them and taught. When evening came, the disciples recommended that the people be sent away to procure food. There was none to be had there. Instead, Jesus told the disciples to give them something to eat. From five loaves and two fish. And yet, it was sufficient to feed 5,000 men plus women and children. The second meal was full of life-giving grace. Today we hear that following the meal, Jesus dismissed the disciples and then the people and spent time in prayer. What was he praying about? 
We don't know, nor do we need to know. What we do need to see is Jesus was in close relationship with his heavenly Father. Amidst all his ministry, he always took time for prayer. Do we do that? We are called children of God. Do we seek out our Heavenly Father's guidance in our lives? Do we take the time, and yes, the effort, to cry out when we're distressed, to give thanksgiving when prayer is answered, to praise God for who God is, to humbly walk with God, doing His will, or do we just want things to go our way, the way that we think they should go? Meanwhile, the disciples had their hands full. They too had experienced all these things, and now they were on the stormy sea of Galilee. Some were experienced fishermen. They knew the lake and they knew all its dangers. Likely, all of them were exhausted. Then, look, what is that over there? Is it, is it a ghost? What else could it be on these stormy seas? People don't get out and stroll on the water, even on calm water. Jesus sees their terror and calls out in comfort. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. It's here that we, as believers, are directly addressed. Peter speaks words of faith. Lord, if it is you, and by the way, that could be translated, since it is you, call me to you, direct me. He recognizes that with Jesus, all things are possible. After all, he had seen all manner of healing and miracles. Most recently, the one, was it only the day before? In the feeding of the 5,000. He knows that what Jesus commands, Jesus makes possible. Have you ever seen that in your life? I have, or I wouldn't be here. Sometime, ask me about my foreign language abilities. Then remember that Greek and Hebrew is required to become a pastor in our denomination. Maybe though, instead of academic ability, you found a gift of generosity or teaching. Maybe you've been called to come alongside those who are hurting and offer words of comfort. Maybe you have the gift of healing, which is so critical in today's days of pandemic. Then Peter obeys. Did he know the risks? Of course he knew the risks. He was an experienced fisherman. He stepped out in faith, exhibiting his trust. He stepped out, out of the boat, onto the water. And that's the next step for us too. We say that we are willing to go where we're being called. So when we receive that call, do we go? Or do we say we believe, but look for 
reasons to avoid or ignore the call. That's the next step in our faith journey, embarking on the new path. Then Peter seems to notice the storm and the waves. He certainly had to know they were there before. Some say he took his eyes from Jesus. Maybe he did. Or maybe he was simply overcome by the reality of what was happening around him. We can see that happening around and to us. That was true before the pandemic. It's even more true now. But Jesus offers a steady and reassuring hand. He says, you have little faith. But notice, he doesn't say you have no faith. These same words are offered to the disciples. To those worried about clothing or storm or, yes, even today about pandemic, faith is given. Courage is reinforced. And we see this too in our reading from Romans. Paul has been addressing the issue of belief, or rather the lack of belief, of his Jewish people. He shows how the law is fulfilled in Jesus, that because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Everyone will be saved through our Lord Jesus Christ if they just call on him. But did you catch the next part? That is in telling the story. Telling of Jesus, who he is, what he means to you and to me. That is a critical step for all believers. As disciples, we have choices to make when we encounter our living Lord. What do we see and hear? Like those disciples, we must ask, is he a ghost? Do we recognize him? Do we recognize his authority over the wind and the waves, a sign of his divinity. Once we recognize him, do we ask him to call us, to give us a task to do? Or do we cower in the boat, hoping that someone else will speak up? Why? Is our boat confining us from? And is the boat safe? The answer is no. Remember, the boat is being battered by the waves. Our boat is battered by many factors, not the least of which is COVID-19. So do we step out of the boat? And what is our boat anyway? I can hear some of you asking. I submit it's our building, 
and are doing things that we have always done before. We've seen how with COVID, that is simply no longer possible. So we've stepped out. We continue to have virtual worship now that we've resumed in-person worship. How about our recent fourth Monday meal with Carrie set up alongside Spruce? Yes, we still had some delivery, and yes, we miss being able to eat together downstairs. But we were able to do ministry in a new way. Many of you know that I walk my dog several times a day, mostly on four and third. So many people this week have stopped to tell me how much they enjoyed the meal and how much they had missed it over the last few months. They said thank you. Tell everyone thank you when we do step back. Do we let the intense circumstances surrounding us terrify us so we begin to forget why we stepped out in the first place? Are we like Peter, brash and very human Peter, who realizes the stroll on the sea is taking a wrong direction? Do we let the intense circumstances surrounding us terrify us so much that we begin to forget why we stepped out in the first place? Do we then call on Jesus before we slip under the waves? Finally, when we are returned to the boat, do we join together in worship and in confessing that Jesus is indeed the Son of God and our Lord and Savior? Stepping out of the boat is not an easy thing. But it is something that we are each called to do. It may mean walking alongside friends and neighbors as they deal with hard questions and tough times. It may be a listening ear. It may even be going to seminary. It may be that you are the one person who bothers to thank a clerk or a cashier or a receptionist, even when you yourself feel overwhelmed. Come, the seas are stormy, but our Savior is there calling us to him to worship and then go out in service to our friends and our neighbors and our world. Amen and Amen.